and welcome to the EU Observer's Talk Show. Emmy, please talk about the EU. Joining me here today to discuss the state of the European Union is Martin Messerschmidt, the Danish MEP from the Europe for Freedom and Democracy group here in the European Parliament, and Andrei Kovetskov, the Bulgarian MEP from the European People's Party here in the European Parliament. Thank you very much for joining me here today, and thank you very much for watching. So without further ado, let's talk about EU. Now, since January, the EU has been making the headlines. Sometimes not for the right reasons. There's been a variety of crises from the European sovereign debt crisis, the cucumber crisis, the Schengen debate, and so on and so forth. So before you take off on your holidays in August, I wanted to take the opportunity to have a chat with you about this and kind of analyse the state of the European Union at the moment. Because just recently, Herman van Rompuy said that the mood was not so good. What do you think, as the vice chairman of the European Union or the European Federalists group, What's your opinion? How are you taking this criticism of the EU? Indeed, the European Union is a, a deep crisis at the moment because uh, we have uh, two uh, movements uh, now uh, among our citizens. Uh, one is uh, pro-European, I hope uh, very much this is uh, the, the majority, and one which uh, is uh, more populistic and nationalistic thinking, uh, thinking actually backwards. Uh, um, so I hope very much that the answer to the crisis, uh, the answer to our problems and the answer to have more jobs, more competitiveness to, uh, uh, on Europe, uh, uh, Europe to become a global player uh, and uh, in our globalized world is more Europe. Uh, but Mr. Manchin, you wouldn't agree, would you? You would take another I think, it's, I think it's a good thing that when the European Union is creating problems that we find solutions that are adequate for the modern world we live in. And it's obvious that uh, the try to harmonize all the economics in the euro and, the, and try to build up an open movement within the union without border control has led to some tremendous problems. Uh, race and criminality, um, huge economic problems. But wait problems a minute, I mean, I'm sure like you, you enjoy traveling freely oh, yes. around the EU. So why is Denmark so adamant about restricting up these borders? Well, I, I, I have traveled freely even before Denmark uh, joined the Schengen Agreement. But uh, I have no problem whatsoever to have my bags checked when I uh, go through the airport and stuff like that. I just think the same thing should happen for people crossing the Danish physical border to Germany, for instance. That's what we have now reinstated, that we have more customs control. Um, I would much rather wait two minutes at the border than I would have free movement of, of, uh, of uh, whatever uh, criminal networks coming from all over the European Union. What do you think? No, I don't, uh, Europe is not a pick and choose model. We cannot, uh, n national states cannot say I like this uh, uh, common policy and I don't like the other one. I uh, see the European Union only as a common market but I don't like to share the solidarity and I don't like to share other basic uh, freedom and basic values of the European Union and the freedom of uh, uh, travel is a basic value which we cannot give up if a sovereign nat nation like to, to leave uh, uh, some of the, uh, not to respect some of the Mm, this basic value, then they need to decide under the Lisbon Treaty they can leave also even the Union if they, uh, they like. Uh, this is uh, democracy. Uh, but uh, uh, this is not a pick and choose model. And uh, the populists uh, in, in Europe and anti European uh, policymakers are trying always to argue against the European Union saying this is too expensive, uh, um, giving uh, uh, some inefficiency of the, of the uh, bureaucracy in, in Europe. We can discuss all these points, but this is not uh, to make Europe bad and to make uh, uh, the, the citizens believe that we don't need the European Union. In opposite, to make uh, uh, Europe strong, we need the discussion, a democratic discussion on all these problems, inefficiency, Greece, uh, uh, bureaucracy, um, uh, criminality, mm -hmm. security of our external borders, and there's a shared responsibility. We need more uh, Frontex, uh, more stuff and more um, uh, equipment for Frontex that we secured our border. And I agree with you, criminals uh, uh, should be stopped. Uh, illegal immigration should be stopped on a European level with the European solutions and not with the national solutions. I think, I believe in a uh, the European solution. Okay, I'll just stop you there. Before we came on air, you said that you would like to shut down the European Parliament, both here in Strasbourg and in Brussels, but you don't want to see the end of the European Union. Can you explain well, I, a little? Sure, I think the European Parliament is a farce. Uh, I mean, there is no connection between the parliamentarians and the voters. Uh, more than the majority of the votes we have, they are secret, so that people cannot control it. We don't have any pu public uh, uh, 
uh, attendance really from uh, as we know it from the national parliaments but what we, on the other hand what we do have are is, uh, is uh, 27 quite well functioning parliaments in our member states I think that the authority and the resources that is now within the European Parliament should be given back to the national parliaments and they can take part in the legislative process along with the Commission and the Council that will be a much more democratic way it will be much more, much more transparent and much more efficient well there seems to be a problem here um, national governments are saying one thing to Brussels and then going back home and saying something else we saw Viktor Orban yesterday who was um, saying goodbye to the Hungarian presidency. He was here in the parliament yesterday and he said that Hungary would never answer to Brussels and that Hungary was not subordinate to Brussels. So what do you think about that? This is indeed very bad when national politics sitting in the council, taking the decision in the council uh, and then uh, uh, taking the responsibility for these decisions and going back to uh, their capitals and saying uh, now European Union is uh, forcing us to do this and that. Uh, and uh, um, I think uh, if there is some successes, then and all the politicians like to uh, to present the successes at their own successes, even their national successes. If there are some problems, some challenges, they give this problem to the European Union. We saw this with the, with the um, strategy for the Roma's integration. Now some uh, uh, policymakers in the national states tried to transfer this uh, responsibility to the European Union to do the integration of these 12 million uh, mm -hmm. Roma's in uh, on our it's continent. It's true that we are. I mean, the countries are being forced here. We have a commission which has the monopoly of, uh, of presenting new suggestions and a commission which is is not democratically elected. We have a parliament that might be elected, but not, uh, what is not a representative to the population. And each time we change the treaties, all the stakeholders in the union are trying to do whatever they can in order to avoid to have public referendums. So this is a, is a union of force that they are not asking the people. They are asking the people only in the limited areas where they cannot avoid it. But in the general, all the, the, the major topics, uh, the, the people is not uh, invited into the political process. So obviously we see that uh, that people react against this because they are feeling that they are losing the, the influence on their everyday life, they're losing the influence on their democracy, on, their, on the, which policy should agree? be governing in their countries? Not for sure, not uh, because we have different level of uh, governance. We have the regional one, we have the national one, and we have for sure one supranational, which is uh, the European Union with the three institutions. Now we need to discuss how to do it more legitimate, how to do it more democratic for sure. The European Parliament is the only one uh, directly elected parliament, but we have a problem because uh, the, the European uh, debate more visible to the citizens and not uh, so far to the citizens, for sure. I, I, I just have some points what you, you range is uh, totally uh, agree with this, but the, the way to the instruments to re-nationalization, what you suggest uh, is uh, something what I totally not agree. I but think just for the Europe fact is, that we have to speak uh, a, a second language in order to communicate on this, I mean, you have to be able to communicate in other languages than your native language. Just that is a limitation of the political, uh, political debate. Why not move this discussion to a national parliament where, where you can discuss in your tongue with your voters, whether I can in Danish with my voters and do so on. Do you think in I our mean, globalized world, indeed, uh, uh, Denmark as a several sovereign, only a lone staying country will survive? No, that's not what do I'm saying. Think, no, but w what is your uh, recipe? What, what do you suggest to dissolve uh, our European Union, to uh, uh, get rid from the European Parliament and yeah. uh, yes, to we have need solutions. Uh, uh, some solutions kind of exactly. inter intergovernmental cooperation well, like let's just state United one thing, Nation, that uh, the solutions that the European Union has been providing for the past 10 years has only led to more problems and less solutions. No. So, so, so that's, that's a fact. I mean, you just if, started if you this interview with Mr. mentioning all the crisis that was caught, occurred you, due to you, EU regulation. But if you know the history of our continent, if you know the oldest uh, uh, problems with, with the world, with the ethnical um, uh, clearance, what, what was done on our continent, if we don't go in the direction of uh, more integration, we will end up again with a, in a catastrophe, in a disaster. Well, yeah. And I don't think uh, only uh, intergovernmental cooperation is uh, enough. Uh, but the fact is that your way is actually leading to less and less uh, support among the population. The more integration you get, the less support you have in the European populations to this project. Maybe you should yes, just sir. for once ask the populations what they want, not only the Irish that had to be asked twice in order to vote the right, uh, the right answer. Maybe you should actually ask the people, and not only the Commission, what it is that they desire in order to avoid the past that none of us want. But well, maybe we together well. should uh, uh, show to our citizens the benefit of our Europe, of the European Union, of the European project, and not to are against Europe and not always to, to try part of the to legitimate uh, to make a national uh, policy career on uh, um, on the shoulder of the European Union and to say how bad is European Union the European integration. At this stage, um, I just want to ask our viewers what you think is Europe a solution or is it a problem? Please leave us a comment here under the video or write us an email at video at euobserver.com. Now let's just quickly talk about the Polish presidency. We saw Donald Tusk give an inspiring speech this morning that was very pro. Um, European integration. Tell me how you react to that speech. 
I was uh, amazing, very happy to, to hear Donald Tusk uh, this morning because uh, we missed uh, for many, uh, not years, but months now, uh, such a strong pro-European commitment uh, to our uh, continental integration, I would say, in this globalized world. And we don't have any other alternative uh, and uh, then the European further European integration, because renationalization, introducing of uh, uh, borders between us, uh, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, egoistical uh, um, thinking, even on the on the multi financial framework, financial framework and the budget, uh, is something what uh, will not bring us uh, further. And mm -hmm. please, this is very important to uh, understand our citizens. Uh, if we go on uh, on the numbers. We are working as European citizens for days, for less than one week, for the European Union budget. So now a populist uh, in, in Europe are trying uh, always to say European Union is too expensive, but the benefit of uh, the Union is much, much higher than these uh, four days what we are working for the European budget, and this 1% of the GDP what is in the European budget. And we expect from this budget a lot, agriculture, infra, uh, environmental, infrastructure, human mm -hmm. rights, uh, uh, and for sure uh, all the social issues what are related with uh, education okay. and so on. And just to wrap up the future of the EU in Europe, opinion should be? Well, there are two roads. I mean, either you can follow the one, the, the Federalist one here, which will remove the European project more and more away from the population, and people will lose more and more faith, and thereby the entire democracy will be in jeopardy. Uh, or you can try to listen to the people and thereby enforce the, 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 the true way of working together, um, limiting the European Association on what is crucially an international matter, but of course respecting the differences among the countries, the democratic traditions, and that some countries want to have not closed borders, but more border control. That that some countries want to have another economical uh, governance, that some country wants to have specific details in their constitutions, and that is not something for people that are not representing these countries or commissioners, commissioners that are not representing anybody, though, uh, to decide on. Mm -hmm. And finally, you, in 20 seconds, can you tell me what your vision for um, the future of Europe is? Uh, first of all, there's uh, no different reading of the human rights. So uh, this is a fundamental. The, the, the human rights need to be respected in all member states, and we cannot uh, say this is a national problem. If uh, in one country there is a problem with the respect to the minority, and so on. we need to get closer to our citizens to explain to our citizens why European Union is a needed and is a no alternative to have a closer cooperation. Because we need a citizen. Without the citizens, it's uh, uh, sure that we cannot succeed. And I want to know what you citizens think about the state of the European Union. Please leave us a comment or send us an email to video at euobserver.com. I'll leave you now with a clip of just a glimpse of what the people on the street think about the European Union. Thank you very much to my guests today for joining me and thank you of course for watching. Goodbye and take care. Je pense qu'elle va pas très bien. Au niveau financier en tout cas. L'Union Européenne, je souhaiterais qu'elle soit plus sociale. C'est ce qui décourage les gens en ce moment et qui les détourne de l'Europe. Euh, moins de débats sur tout ce qui est nationalité, sur tout ce qui est euh, moins, de, ouais, moins de racisme. Parce qu'il y a des désaccords entre les différents pays, donc euh, je pense que le processus euh, est en train de, de ralentir. Les Européens ont besoin de savoir déjà s'il y a vraiment une identité européenne ou si c'est chacun dans son pays. Parce qu'en ce moment, est... on est énormément dans le nationalisme.